today we started during the morning session and we spoke about the ministry of Moses and the ministry of Joshua. This evening we want to take a look into the ministry of Elijah and the ministry of Elisha. Remember that uh, the title for this Bible study is Specific Ministries Given by the Lord. And the purpose is to clarify that though the Lord is the one who calls to ministry and we are called, the ones who are called full-time into specific ministry and sometimes our ministries are in the same line, it doesn't mean that our ministries must be the same. In this case, both of these men of God were called by the Lord. Elijah was a prophet and his successor, Elisha, was a prophet as well. However, there is a difference in the way they ministered and there is a difference in the way they developed that ministry. Not because they wanted that, that is something that must be clear for everyone. The ministry is given by the Lord. The way the ministry operates is given by the Lord. The gifts that may function or operate in that ministry is given by the Lord as well. So everything when it is a divine calling, everything is from the Lord. So even the message of every minister, though we speak about different things, every pastor will speak about different things. Because for you to be a pastor, if you're a pastor, just in the case of a pastor, you must feed the congregation with the food, the spiritual food. However, you will notice that every pastor will have a specific line in his message. And when he enters that specific line in his message, you will see a special anointing and uh, it is almost that People say he's specialized in speaking about this. It is not really that you specialize. It is not really that you love that area, but it is that God himself, who is the one who calls, is also the one who will give everything that is operating in that person when the ministry is going on. Let us speak about Elijah. He was a prophet. His ministry was aimed, listen, it is highlighted there. His ministry was aimed to rebuke the kings and to make the nation to turn back to the Lord. And uh, a particular thing in Elijah is that he used to be far from the kings. It is particular when you study the life of this man of God, you will find that he was called by the Lord, but his ministry was aimed mainly to rebuke the kings. And uh, something particular in his life is that he used to be far from the kings. It means he didn't love to be near to the kings. He used to be in the wilderness, somewhere else. He used to head by the commandment of God 
in a special place and so but he didn't used to be near to the kings he used to be far from the kings and his ministry was aimed to rebuke them i know there is not a word that is really normal word used in the language but if you would like to say something you would have to distort a little bit the language and say that he was called more as a rebuker. It means someone who is always rebuking somebody. That was Elijah ministry. And it was not his will. It was not his likes or dislikes. It was the Lord's ministry for him. Let us take a look. In 1 Kings chapter 17, you will find Elijah rebuking Ahab and he predicted a drought on the land of Israel. That is the first time you will see Elijah's ministry, 1 Kings chapter 17. And when he appears, the first thing that he says is, there will be no more rain nor dew upon the earth until I say it with my word. He was rebuking the king. Then, again in chapter 18, you will find him. Elijah rebuked Ahab again. When he met again the king, after more than three years, he, the king said to the prophet, are you the one troubling Israel? And he said, not me, but you. The sin that you're committing, it is you who are troubling Israel. Gather me all the false prophets and gather me all the people of Israel and let us see who is God here. So he was always rebuking. He prayed to the Lord after that and offered the sacrifice to make the people turn back to the Lord. You know the story. This was something miraculous. He just offered the sacrifice and prayed, Lord, prove these people that I am not doing this by myself. That I have done all these things because you commanded me to do it. Send fire from heaven. Show them you are God. The Bible says he was still praying. He didn't finish his prayer. He was still praying when fire descended from heaven. And consumed the sacrifice. And consumed the stones. And even lick the water that was on top and around the sacrifice. Because it was not Elijah's ministry. It is God who gives ministry to people. And then later on in the same chapter you will find him praying the Lord. And saying send rain. Father, because these people already acknowledge you are God. Send rain again. And he prayed. We never know. But the, the story you know as well. He was on top of the mountain praying with his helper. He sent his helper to watch. Just take a look. Tell me what is going on. I'll continue praying. And after some times... These seven said, I see a little crowd, like the palm of the hand of a person coming up from the sea. And he said, okay, now it is there. Send a message to the king. Get ready. Take your chariot. Go to Israel. Because there is a great rain coming now. And as he was saying that, immediately all the skies were darkened. 
with clouds and there was a great rain but the Bible says something it says but the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah you see that it was not Elijah it was the Lord it says when, when this thing happened that the whole sky was darkened with clouds and that great rain was coming it says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah he girded his loins he put out he shoots tight enough. And then it says, and he ran before the king's chariot until he entered the city of Jezreel. There is something when the Lord calls that you cannot explain very well. But it is the ministry that is given by God is specific. Though he was this type of prophet that was always rebuking, there was always such a mighty backup of God in his life. He was supported by the Lord in such a way that even he could do things that are out of the mind of human beings. How can you run before the chariot of the king? Before the horses? But it was all under the mighty hand of God. It was under the power of the Lord. It was because of the Holy Ghost anointing upon him. And let me tell you something. That all we need in ourselves. When we want to serve God. Is just be in, in line with the Lord. So that the Holy Ghost may come upon you. And the Holy Spirit of God may come upon me. That there may be an overflowing power in you. That you will do things that people never dream about. It is not you. It is not your ability. It is not your capacity. It is God's hand upon you. In other words, it is the Holy Spirit of the Lord that will come upon the ministry. And upon the minister as well. It is wonderful when we speak about this. We get excited. I just imagine running like that. I have never run like that. But do you imagine running like that under the anointing of the Holy Ghost? And that heavy rain at that moment, it was a confirmation. You will see again Ahab, and then you find him in chapter 21. He is rebuking Ahab the third time. You will see all that I want to emphasize is that he was in his ministry aimed to rebuke the kings. That was the ministry. He's, you see him. He is rebuking again Ahab the third time in chapter 21. And third, when he rebuked this king, predicted the destruction of that king and the destruction of his household. That was the third time. And he said, the Lord is going to wipe away your household. You will be destroyed totally. Not only you. He said, your wife also. Even your sons, all your house, you will be destroyed totally. That was the ministry of this man of God. And you see that this came to pass because the Lord destroyed Ahab, and not only Ahab, but Jezebel in due time. And not only Jezebel, but in due time, even the whole household of Ahab was swept away. That was his ministry. Then you will see him in 2 Kings in chapter 1. Elijah is now rebuking another king. His name, Ahaziah. Ahaziah was Ahab's son. And you know, if you know the story, you will see, but I'm, I'm just speaking a little faster and not reading that much because of time. But these this king, Isaiah, he was sick. 
but he was following the same line of his father. And he sent messengers to the god of Ikron. It was another city and those were pagan gods. He sent messengers to inquire from those hidden gods. Would I be healed? The Lord said to Elijah, I have another little job for you. More rebuking. This man has sent some messengers. Stop them. And tell them not the pagan or hidden God's answer. Tell them my answer. And he came on the way and stopped the messengers. Where are you going to? Well, we are the messengers of the king. By chance are you going to inquire from any hidden God? Just turn back. Go to that king and tell him, you shall not live. You shall die. You will never get up from that bed that you are lying now. Because, thus says the Lord, there is no God in Israel that you have to send to inquire from a pagan and hidden God. You will die. That was his ministry. He was a prophet. But even... Though there are some different prophets, not every prophet, his ministry is aimed in that direction. It is God who does everything. You know the rest of the story. King was upset. He sent messengers, bring me that prophet here so that he may tell me that in my face. He sent messengers, and those messengers were soldiers. Captain with 50 soldiers. Man of God. Thus says the king, come down. Let's come to him. He said, am I a man of God? Are you sure I am a man of God? If I am a man of God, let fire fall from heaven and consume you with your 50 soldiers. And the word of God says, fire came from heaven and consumed the 50 soldiers plus the captain. I think there were some witnesses around because the king knew what happened. But he said, what? This man going to mock me like that? 50 more soldiers. Another captain, go! Tell him, I need him here to tell me that in my face. He was still on top of that hill. And the 50 soldiers plus the captain came and the captain spoke. Man of God! This is a military. He's an army man. Man of God! Thus says the king. Come down. Let's go to him. He wants you to tell them, to tell him that in his face. He said, are you sure I am a man of God? If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you with all your soldiers. And the word of God says, fire came again. From heaven and consumed the 50 soldiers and the captain. But the king was not glad with that. What? Again? 50 more soldiers. You captain come. Call him down. Tell him that I want him to come down. And tell me that in my face. But on the way. The captain and the soldiers were talking among themselves. Which way should we use to tell this man 
I am afraid to go. And everybody said, me too. Who's going to speak? Every soldier said, you are the captain. But please, see that you do it in the proper way. Otherwise, we are done. So the captain came again. And the 50 soldiers with him. And the man said, please, man of God, don't say anything. Please, 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 quiet. Just let me speak. Please, please. And the Bible says, he knelt before the man of God and said, please, man of God, consider this your servant. I have a wife, I have children. This your servant. They are some family people. We please. We don't know how to tell you. Please have mercy. Don't say anything. Please don't say anything. This captain and the soldiers were almost crying there. Please, please, man of God. Be quiet. Don't say anything. Have mercy. And these your servants. We are your servants. Then the angel of the Lord said. Come on. How do you find that? Polite right? Yes, okay come down. Go and tell the man. The message in his face. So the man of God said. Okay. What is what you want to tell me? So well. It is not our fault. It is the king. He wants to hear the message from your own mouth. He said, okay, let us go. He was amazed. I said, are you coming? Yes, I'm coming with you. And the prophet came and looked at the king and said, you wanted to hear the word from my own mouth? Yes. Thus says the Lord. Is there no God in Israel. That you have to send. And inquire. From hidden gods. You will never come up. From that bed. You will die. Because you are not trusting in God. And that immediately happened. The king died. So that was Elijah. He was always rebuking. Rebuking. You see, no consolation there. You will die. No consolation for the captains. No consolation. No consolation for the soldiers. No consolation for Ahab. No consolation in the first time. No consolation the second time. No consolation the day he said, you will be swept away by the hand of the Lord. That was his ministry you can't do things by yourself do you want to fit in the plan of God be sure that you are whom you are don't try to be Moses don't try to be Joshua don't try to be Elijah don't wish any other thing Wish the will of God for you. You know the prayer, the prayer the Lord taught us to pray? It looks a simple prayer, right? It says in a statement of that prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done. Let it be done on earth as it is done in heaven. It looks simple, but it's not that simple. It's not that simple. It means God has special purposes, specific things he wants to do. His will during an appointed time for a people or for a person or for whatever it is, for a nation is right there. He has a plan. He just wants a person that can fit into his purpose. 
to do what he wants to do. Finally, Elijah was taken by a whirlwind to heaven. And he left behind Elisha to be a prophet in his place, in his room. It is so amazing. People will always remember Elijah. When you speak about Elijah, you think about power. Normally people think about Elijah and you think about power. Because of the specific way that ministry used to operate. Now let us see about Elijah. Elijah was a prophet. Same thing. His ministry was different to Elijah's. Listen. There is something. I, it calls my attention. Because Elijah was Elijah's disciple. Elisha spent at least seven years with Elijah. And what he learned from ministry, he learned from Elijah. And he was with Elijah when Elijah rebuked the king Ahab and King Ahaziah. He was with the man when the fire came down from heaven and consumed the soldiers and the captains. Elisha was there. He was a witness because he was Elijah's disciple. But when he was called into ministry, his ministry was different to that one of Elijah's. Elisha used to be with the kings or close to them. The opposite. And he used to advise them. It's different. Why? It is not your ministry. It is the Lord's ministry. And he just calls you to do that ministry. It is not you. It is not you. It is the Lord. Let us see. Elisha was with the army when Jehoram, the king of Israel, campaigned against the Moabites. This is written in 2 Kings in chapter 3. There was war between King Jehoram and the Moabites because Moab rebelled against Israel. So Jehoram campaigned against the Moabites when war but when the army was going around the wilderness to meet the Moabites to engage in warfare, the Bible says they ran out of water. And they thought they were going to die. And uh, Jehoram was with another king, the king of Judah. And the king of Judah says... Is there any man of God here that we may inquire from the Lord? And there was somebody that says, yes, Elisha, who used to be Elijah's servant, is here. You see the difference? The other... Man of God, Elijah was never with the kings, but there is a warfare, there is an army going, campaigning against the Moabites, and when someone inquires, Elisha was there. And then Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, said, This man for sure will have a word of God. And they went to him. And though Elisha rebuked King Jehoram, however, he advised him. He said, I will never talk to you. Neither look at your eyes. 
unless I had some respect for Jehoshaphat. However, so he was rebuking, but he was another type of man in his ministry. However, bring somebody that can play the harp for me. And they brought a musician, and musician started playing the harp. And it says, the hand of the Lord. The Spirit of God came upon Elisha. Thus says the Lord. And he gave a word to the king. And he predicted a victory. He predicted a victory. And not only predicted a victory. He even advised the king. Do like this, and this, and this. Because the victory is not all. You must do this and this. And he advised the king. I don't want to stop much because of time. Second, when the king of Israel was troubled. And that is in chapter 5. That is the story of a man called Nehemiah. Who used to be the general of Syria. He was a leper. And the king of Syria sent this general. Who was a leper. With letters. I sent to you. And the letters were addressing the king. I sent my servant. To you that you heal him. From his leprosy. And the Bible says. The king was troubled. When he read the letter. Because there was. This. Political. Rift between the two. Nations. He read the letter. And he said. What? Am I God that this man has sent this Syrian to me that I heal him from his leprosy? Am I God? And he saw that as an international threat, political threat. He said, this man is looking for a warfare. And the Bible says he rent his clothes. And he was upset and troubled at the same time. It was something serious. You, imagine you were that king. Imagine someone comes with a letter to you. The other one is telling you, I send you this one. Heal him, please. I want to see this man healed when he comes back. So all this happened, but the Bible says, when this happened, Elisha was in Samaria. So you see, he used to be close to the kings. When he heard that, he sent a messenger to the king. Why are you troubled? Why did you rent your clothes like that? Send him to me that uh, it may be known that there is a prophet in Israel. You see the rest of the story, you know. How many of you know the story? How many of you know the story? And then the king said, okay, listen. Yes, you can be healed. Now, now the king was quiet, said, no problem. You can be healed now. You will go back to your Lord completely whole. No problem. Go with this man. He will take you to the right place and you will be healed. And so the messenger took the general to the house of Elisha. But before knocking at the door, Elisha sent a messenger. Tell him to go wash himself seven times in Jordan River. He never came out. He just sent a messenger. Tell him to go and wash him seven times in the Jordan River and he will be healed. 
You know the rest of the story. At the beginning, he was upset. He wanted to go back home. But the servant said, my Lord, please. We came down such a long way just for you to be healed. And the prophet has said, if you do it, you will be healed. Just do it, please. And they convinced the man. He washed seven times in Jordan River. He was totally healed. That was Elisha. Although he was a prophet and though he was Elijah's disciple, he was always helping the kings. When there was war between Syria and Israel, in chapter 6, you will find Elisha. The Syrian king now engaged in warfare with Israel. And he was always planning and doing and saying, we'll send an army here, we'll put an ambush here. But Elisha was there and he was advising the king, don't go that way. Because that way, the Syrian army sent an ambush there. Then the king of the Syrians said, okay, they discovered our plan, but let's go this way now. Then Elisha said, come on. Be careful. They are sending the army on the other side now. So much that the king of the Syrian thought there was a spy in the army. And he called off his servants. Will you not tell me who the spy is? And then someone said, sorry, sorry, Lord. Oh, my Lord, king, there is not a single spy here. I will tell you what. There is someone in Israel. Whatever you speak. When you close the door of your bedroom. He will know it clearly. What? Yes. He will know everything that you speak. Right here. Close the doors. Do whatever you do. And that man will know it immediately there. What's the name of that man? Elisha. How is he like this? Where is him? Such a place. Send an army. Bring him here. That was Elisha was always advising and helping the kings. The rest of the story, I'd like to have more time, but I don't have more time. Then when there was a siege, because the, the, the Syrians beseech Samaria there was that famine Elisha was in the city again you see the difference Elijah was far away Elisha was always there Elijah was always rebuking Elisha was always counseling advising Elisha was there and he predicted again a great blessing and a victory from God. Let me just finish. Elisha predicted that Hazel or Azael would be the king of Syria. Elisha prophesied through a younger prophet that Jehu would be the king of Israel and would destroy Ahab's household. That is in chapter 9 in 2 Kings. And finally, Elisha prophesied that King Josh would defeat three times the Syrians. And the, the last, the last uh, part of Elisha says that he died because he was old and sick. And they put his body in a cave. That is the last thing that the Bible says about Elisha. They put his body in a cave. And this band of the enemies, it means soldiers from the Syrians, came to the land of Israel. And they were just going around while... Some people were carrying the corpse, the dead young man. 
And when they were just taking this dead body to do the funeral, they saw the soldiers, the enemies coming. And the Bible says they were so afraid that they saw that cave open through the dead body in there and started running away. You may laugh now because you were not there. Had you been there, you would never laugh. Now you may laugh and you have the right to laugh. Come on, laugh if you want. But they took the dead body, threw it inside the cave. The Bible says it had been some time that they had put the body of the prophet there and what was remaining now was just the bones. So it means some time the prophet had been buried in that cave. Now just the bones. And the Bible says when the dead body touched the bones of Elisha. There was no Elisha there. There was just the bones of Elisha. When the dead body touched the bones of Elisha, whoop, he resurrected. He became alive. He came out of the cave. But when he came out of the cave, there were some soldiers, enemies of Israel, coming. He saw soldiers coming that way. So he turned and started running this way. They were enemies. So the whole picture is funny for me. The ones who went were carrying the funeral. They were running in front. Because there were some enemies, some soldiers coming after them. They threw the body. The man resurrects. He comes out. He sees the enemies and starts running as well. So, the ones in front turned back to see how far were the enemies. And they saw the dead man running after them. They sprint more. The dead man that was now alive. Looking back, he sees the enemies. He sprints again, so it was something wonderful. Everybody was running. Everybody. The funeral carriers, the dead man, and the soldiers, all of them running at the same time. But I just want to tell you, when God chooses someone and says, this is what I want you to do, don't worry, you don't have to be Elijah. You can be Elisha if you are Elisha and the Lord is going to support you and the Lord is going to bless you that even if you are dead, the Lord will still give testimony that your ministry is with his backup. That it is not you, that it is him. Many people, and that is... What I want to now, I'm closing. That is what I wanted to tell you with this Bible study. Many people, we don't understand that these ministries that the Lord gives to people, they are specific and unique and that we don't have to be anybody else. We don't have to be anybody else. You have to be you. You have to do what the Lord called you to do. Do it faithfully. Do it according to what the Lord has led you. Don't copy anything from outside. Don't copy anything from any outer example. The best things are produced in ministry. Not when those things come from out in 
the best things are produced when it comes from in out. Are you following me? The good results don't come when you take things from out in. Because when you act in ministry and what you receive is from out in, it means you are copying what you see. You are copying methods. You are copying the operation of somebody else. You are copying what you see as good results in somebody else. And then you take from out and try to put it in how it works. When it is from inside out, it is what the Lord put inside you. And it will be on the opposite. It will be from inside you. To manifest outside. And that will be something wonderful. Because sometimes people may ask you. How do you do to continue performing what you are doing? In face of the opposition. How do you do? To continue pressing forward in spite of the misunderstanding, in spite of troubles, in spite of different situations that some of the people would just be down. Why these men of God continued pressing forward because things were not from outside in. Things were from inside out. Just close with this. The Lord Jesus said. Unless the seed of corn. Fall into the ground. And die. It will remain alone. If you don't let. The seed of corn to fall into the ground and die. It will remain alone. That is what the law says. It means there will be not much fruit. It says, but if the seed of corn falls to the ground and dies. It will bring forth. Much fruit. And you know what it means? You know what it means? It means from inside, outside. Take a look into it and you will see. The seed of corn falls into the ground. For the seed of corn to die, there is a process. The dirt will cover it. The water will just wet the outer skin of that seed will rot will rot until it disappears and then that seed of corn after the outer skin is rot then it will split in two and when it splits in two from the inside, it will spring new life. So when it is from in out, is what the Lord is doing. Then you will see results. When it is from, you want, you try from the outside in, doesn't work. But from inside outside, it will work a lot. Are you with me? Just closing. Be careful. Consider 
what the Lord does, what the Lord wants to do with you, you must be honest with yourself. You don't try to take things from outside in. Don't look at anybody else to see what is working for him. To put it to work in you. But go to the Lord. Talk to him and ask him what is what you want me to do. He will put inside you some things. And those things that he puts inside you are the things that will produce the right fruit for the glory of God. Are you with me? Did you get it? How many of you got it? It has been, it has been the Bible study for today. Morning and now in the evening. I want to tell you, unless the Lord had done what is going on here, it would have never been done. I'm speaking about this project. I'm speaking about you here. I'm speaking about these conferences. I'm speaking about all these things with this language. I'm speaking about this church, worldwide missionary movement, pioneering and entering Asia, Africa, different languages, and all the things that could be sometimes like amazing for somebody and even some people, you'd come and even with this local church, normally these things don't happen. Normally it is not like this. Because this was not the largest church. This was not the strongest church. This church started some years ago in a rented place. And when we came together with my wife and our children to this place, there, there were just eight baptized members for this church. And some of you pastors were there when we received the charge of this local congregation. And we spent some years just struggling with the rest of the congregation, growing little by little. As some people would say, trying to survive. We, we were not trying to survive. We were doing our part. And when we started this project, people said, Pastor Samuel is mad. And when we started these English services, people told me to stop. And moreover, somebody said, you would never be able to prosper. They told me that in my face. You would never be able to prosper. And that church will never have a property. And you will never grow as a congregation. And you will never do anything. And somebody even told me, you will die alone. Nobody will be with you. Um, I'm not either uh, afraid, neither upset. The only thing I'm just doing is testifying to you. And the first time we prayed for Asia, we drew a map with our own hands. And we stuck it to the wall in a rented place. And everybody in the congregation used to lay hands on that map. People, the ones who still remain from that time in this congregation, remember, we were just laying hands and nobody was thinking anything about going there. Not even the pastor. Not even me. I never thought about going to Asia. Never. All that we wanted was just to pray for a part of the world that was in our heart. Lord, bless that part of the world. 
Do it for the glory of your name. And the first country we started praying for was India. And everybody used to lay hands. Year 2000. I remember the map. Year 2000. We drew it with our hands. We even drew there the special points and the names of the cities. And we prayed until we moved to this place the Lord gave for church. During the time we moved, the map was lost. The following year, the international board uh, told me to go and accompany one of our international board members. And I did it. When I went there, I testified on the stage. It was my first convention in India. It was a convention that could fit in just this side, and still I think that there were enough place for some more people. It was a small convention. I testified and said, in the year 2000, and so I explain again what I already told you. And when I was saying that, the anointing of the Holy Ghost came and people started speaking in tongues. And, and the power of God was moving. And people said, oh, hallelujah. You know why? Because pastor came in front and took the mic. And pastor said, it is amazing, brothers. In year 2000, we as a local church started praying, Lord, show us what is the church we must be with. Because we cannot continue working alone. But we cannot be with any church. We must be with a church that you yourself decides for us, oh God. There is a church, we need a church with a missionary vision. We need a church that believes in the Holy Ghost. We need a church that works like this. And, and they say, in year 2004, which is, or 2003, which is the year that we uh, moved and the map was lost. That same day, they had already joined worldwide missionary movement in India, then the map here was lost. Strange. These things are not done by the hand of man. They didn't know about us. We didn't know about them. But the Lord knows there and the Lord knows here. The Lord knows there and the Lord knows you. The Lord is the one who draws a plan. He is the one that has everything in place. And from that time on, the Lord started pushing us from this local church and so on to, to, to press forward, to do a little more, to do a little more. Up to this time, the work of worldwide missionary in Asia, missionary movement in Asia is in more than nine countries. I think 10 countries at the moment. The Lord has taken this church to the Philippines, to Malaysia, to Myanmar, to Sri Lanka, to India, to Nepal, to Kuwait, to Oman, and some of the countries waiting and saying, please, our pastor in Malaysia is just calling and calling, pastor, listen, there is a pastor in Thailand. He's waiting. He said he wants to be a part of the same church. Please, when you come, make sure that you will take time to go with me to Thailand. I am not the one to decide. Another pastor called me and said, Pastor, there is a pastor waiting and a church waiting in Indonesia. Please make sure when you come, we go back to Indonesia as well. I cannot decide. The only thing I want to tell you is when it is God who designs a ministry and when the minister understands this and falls into place, fit in the place what the Lord is saying, whatever the Lord wants to do, he will do. It will never be the minister. It will be the Lord. It will never be your ability. It will be the Lord. Be whom you are.
but depend on God. I'm totally sure I'm, now it is my closing. I'm totally sure we didn't come here by chance. I'm totally sure you came here. Right there I see the Amisar family. They came back after 22 years to the country. On that side I see United States people. Our people. Right there I see some people from Antioquia. Some people from Venezuela. From people from Ecuador. Do you think that we have the power to move people from USA to come from English Missionary Conference to Colombia? Do you think that it is mighty man that have maybe some good speech that may attract people from Venezuela in the midst of all the crisis to this missionary conference? Or do you think that there is a pastor that can move people from many different cities in the country to join together in a place? Or do you think that this musician singing here that I really get amazed when I hear these people singing in English? I say, what, Lord? It must be you. It cannot be man. Because we are not the ones. We don't have the culture. We are not native. All these people, they are from here. Most of them have never come out of the country. How come they feel this as it is their own language? How come they may feel so free to praise your name in that language? How come the atmosphere in a service like this may be an atmosphere filled with the Holy Ghost? How come the anointing is coming down in spite of these people? They are not really native people. It must be the hand of God. It must be the purpose of the Lord. It must be the Holy Spirit that brought you here from your place to give you a special anointing. It must be God who decided that he wants to do something for you. Because it is the last time. Because it is the end of times. Because the Lord knows there is something that must be done. And he has put everything in place for you to be enabled by the Holy Ghost. Because it is God who knows the desire of the hearts. Because many times we don't know. But the Lord already knows. Amen. Maybe we see it as something that it just attracted me. But it is not just a human attraction. I'm totally sure. Because you have to spend money to come here. Not only for your tickets. You have to spend money for your tickets. You have to spend money for your food. You have to spend money for your staying here. And however the Lord has given you the money. Because some of you didn't have the money to come. I know. The Spirit of God is moving right now. And I know that some of you didn't have the money to come here. And the Lord provided you the money somehow at the last minute. The Lord said, listen, I want to do it. I want you to get involved in this. It is not the pastor's vision. Forget about the pastor. Forget about the one who you see in church. It is not the vision of a man. It is God himself who has purpose to do something. And he has decided to include some of you in this purpose that he has designed beforehand. And whenever you understand this. And you open your heart. But you must be clear. There cannot be any hesitation. There cannot be any hesitation. Because if you hesitate in your heart. That thing cannot be done. God is aiming. To do something special in the world. At this end in times. And he has taken some time. Just. Given the capacities. Given the knowledge, putting you in the right atmosphere, 
giving you some abilities that you don't think they are there, but they are there, although you don't think so. Even for some people in the local church, I tell you, do you think that it is a game? Do you think that you are here and you have gotten the opportunity to learn the language just because, because that is something pastor likes? Or do you think that there are some people like our pastor who greeted in the morning and said, I am studying the language for six months. And in spite that he's still missing some fluency, he's clear and fluent enough to communicate what he needs to do? Do you think that that is coming from the hand of a pastor? Or do you think that is the, the right wisdom of any specific project or church? Forget it. It is God. It is the Lord. And as you put yourself into the hands of God, in due time, before this conference closes, the Lord will speak to your heart and do something special with you and will speak to you by his Holy Spirit. I am not the one who called, but I'm totally sure that this conference, the Lord designed it for this time for a special ministry calling for some people. I don't know whom, but the Lord knows. Some of you have been dealt by God for some time, but you came here just asking God, Lord, please, I'm going there. Give me a confirmation. Some of you I know in my spirit were praying, Lord, confirm to me something that I need to know. Before this conference is over, you will know what the Lord has for you. Stand up, please. I want to pray together with you.